It's been about 10 days since Firefly's Blue Ghost Lunar Lander touched down on the moon's surface, and since then it's been very busy. In that time, the lander has primarily been conducting different payload signs and videoing it when possible. In addition, images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter showed the lander's exact location and how close it truly is to a crater. Here I'll go more in depth into the new images and video, payload science, upcoming milestones, and more. Shortly after landing, Blue Ghost deployed four tethered Lunar Magnetotelluric Sounder or LMS electrodes to the surface an 8 foot mass above the top deck. In the video, you can clearly see as it's flung into the distance as well as the deployment of the mast. These instruments will allow NASA and the Southwest Research Institute to study the deep interior of the moon to learn more about the structure and composition of the moon's mantle. More specifically, the electrodes are launched by a spring mechanism to distances of about 20 meters, giving a 40 meter baseline, and are connected by wires to the central electrics box. LMS operates by measuring changes in the electric and magnetic fields due to variations in the solar wind and effects on the Earth's magnetosphere. These external variations induce changes in the fields in the moon's interior, which are measured by LMS. Blue Ghost has also been busy drilling into the lunar surface over the past week. Mounted below the lower deck, NASA's Lunar Instrumentation for Subsurface Thermal Exploration with Rapidity, or LISTER payload, is a pneumatic gas power drill developed by Texas Tech University and Honeybee Robotics that measures the temperature and flow of heat from the moon's interior. A video showing operations on March 3rd showcases this process. Every half meter it descends, the drilling system will pause and extend a custom-built thermal probe into the lunar regolith. LISTER will measure two different aspects of heat flow, thermal gradient, or the changes in temperature at various depths, and thermal conductivity, or the subsurface material's ability to let heat pass through it. Firefly also released a video of the Lunar Planet Vac, which successfully collected, transferred, and sorted lunar soil from the moon using pressurized nitrogen gas. Here you can see the initial deployment to the lunar surface, followed by its interaction with the regolith. It's designed to efficiently collect and transfer lunar soil from the surface to other science instruments or sample return containers without reliance on gravity. Besides these videos, we also got a host of images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. In the first image, the arrow in the top left indicates the location of Blue Ghost, which touched down in the volcanic terrain known as Mary Chrysium. LRO teams were quoted saying, Visible in the upper left is a portion of the volcanic depression, and to the bottom right is a volcanic cone, known as Mons Luttrell. For reference, the image is 4,160 meters wide. A much more zoomed-in close-up showing the before and after clearly highlights the lander. You can see both its shadow being cast along with its reflective top. What's interesting is the perspective these images give on its location and proximity to the nearby craters. It ended up landing right on the rim of a 12 meter wide crater. Back on the landing video, the shadow and the fact that one of the legs wasn't making contact hinted at this. The images, however, make it clear how close the lander really was. Focusing back on the before and after, there's also some obvious engine plume disturbance on the surface. This matches up well with the landing video as Blue Ghost sent a bunch of lunar regolith up off the ground. They chose this specific landing site because it's a large basin located in the northeast quadrant of the moon's near side when observing the moon from the Earth's northern hemisphere. Formerly an ancient asteroid impact site, Mare Chrysium was created by volcanic eruptions that flooded the basin with basaltic lava about 3 billion years ago. They were quoted saying, This unique landing site will allow Firefly's payload partners to gather critical data about the moon's regolith geophysical characteristics, and the interaction of solar wind and Earth's magnetic field. Over the past few days, Blue Ghost has been trying to deal with the extreme heat on the moon's surface. A few days ago on the 8th, Firefly released a statement saying, The moon is heating up as we approach lunar noon, the hottest part of the lunar day that can get up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius. In preparation, Blue Ghost has begun power cycling to keep the lander as cool as possible. With eight payloads objectives already complete, we aim to continue operating our two remaining payloads throughout these power cycles. We'll gradually get back to full power once the surface temperatures start to cool down again, they said. This leads to today's update from the company. Here they are quoted saying, Blue Ghost remains operational as we continue to wait out the remaining lunar noontime heat with power cycles. We've kept our uplink carrier on during this time. With temperatures on the decline, Blue Ghost is staying on longer with each cycle as we expect to start humming with full power again soon. The lander and payloads remain healthy in the meantime, they said. In theory, Blue Ghost is only expected to last about four more days before the sun sets and the lander officially runs out of power. Soon, on March 16th, Blue Ghost is set to capture the lunar sunset, providing data on how lunar dust levitates due to solar influences and creates a lunar horizon glow. This will also likely mark the end of the mission. That being said, there are still a few objectives the lander is hoping to complete before then. For example, in two days on March 14th, Firefly expects to capture high-definition imagery of a total eclipse when the Earth blocks the sun above the moon's horizon. 
something to look forward to in the near future. Even though the time operating on the surface is relatively short at around two weeks long, they've been able to complete a few different firsts. NASA and the Italian Space Agency made history on March 3rd when the Lunar GNSS receiver experiment became the first technology demonstration to acquire and track Earth-based navigation signals on the Moon's surface. The payload's success in lunar orbit and on the surface indicates that signals from the GNSS or Global Navigation Satellite System can be received and tracked on the Moon. These results mean NASA's Artemis missions or other exploration missions could benefit from these signals to accurately and autonomously determine their position, velocity, and time. This represents a stepping stone to advanced navigation systems and services for the Moon and Mars. In a statement, the agency said, Traditionally, NASA engineers track spacecraft by using a combination of measurements, including onboard sensors and signals from Earth-based tracking stations. The payload demonstrates that using GNSS signals for navigation can reduce reliance on human operators because these signals can be picked up and used autonomously by the spacecraft, even as far away as the Moon. The Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's SCAN, or Space Communications and Navigation Program, said, on Earth, we can use GNSS signals to navigate in everything from smartphones to airplanes. Now, this payload shows us that we can successfully acquire and track GNSS signals at the Moon. This is a very exciting discovery for lunar navigation, and we hope to leverage this capability for future missions. Already, there's a second mission planned. Firefly was awarded two additional NASA Commercial Lunar Payload Services task orders to provide payload services in lunar orbit and on the lunar surface in 2026. Utilizing a two-stage spacecraft configuration with Firefly's Blue Ghost Lunar Lander stacked on an Elytra Dark Orbital Vehicle. The Elytra Vehicle will first deploy Blue Ghost and the European Space Agency's Lunar Pathfinder satellite in lunar orbit. Blue Ghost will then touch down on the far side of the moon and operate government and commercial payloads for more than 10 days on the surface. Elytra will remain in lunar orbit to provide long-haul communications and enable radio frequency calibration services for NASA's telescope. In regard to that mission's payloads, they said, the payloads flying on Blue Ghost Mission 2 will pave the way for a lasting lunar presence by enabling communications for future spacecraft, robots, and human explorers. With payloads from NASA, the European Space Agency, and Australia, this international mission will further provide insights into the geological properties of the Moon and its minerals that can support lunar infrastructure and habitation. Following separation from Firefly's Elytra vehicle in lunar orbit, the Blue Ghost lander will touch down at the furthest landing site ever achieved on the far side of the Moon. This uniquely quiet region is shielded from Earth-borne radio frequency noise. The moon further shields noise from the sun during the lunar night, making the region perfectly suited to collect valuable data on the cosmic dark ages, they said. Firefly Aerospace and the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander have been very busy on the lunar surface with only a few days of sunlight left. Fortunately, thanks to a host of videos and images from above, we can get a good idea of what they've been doing and its purpose. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.